I'm Andrew Edwards, and you're watching Gear Live. During the recent Samsung Tech Day in San Jose, California, I had the opportunity to sit down with Jim Elliott, Senior Vice President of Sales and Marketing at Samsung Semiconductor. We talked about how Samsung technology is ushering in the future of smartphones, autonomous driving, super fast 5G wireless networks, fast memory, and more. Now, I won't spoil the interview, but it's clear that we're on the cusp of some major technological advancements that will drive forward a new age of innovation, similar to what we saw when 4G enabled us to carry devices in our pockets that let us order cars right to our precise location, stream music and videos no matter where we are, and the ability to post content to social networks for anyone to read. So the question is, what's next? Here's my interview with Jim Elliott to answer that question. What's going on guys, Andrew Edwards here at Samsung Tech Day 2019 with the man right here, Jim Elliott, how are you doing? Hey, I'm doing great, thank you, thanks for coming. Yeah. This is fantastic, a lot of excitement here in the air, powering innovation as it says on your shirt. Yes. Could you, before we get started talking about what Tech Day is and all the announcements, sure. could you tell people who you are? Who is Jim Elliott? So uh, I run memory sales and marketing here at uh, DSA in, uh, in North America. So I have North America responsibilities for all of our memory products, uh, sales and marketing. So really excited to be hosting our, our Tech yeah. Day uh, 2019 this year. Awesome. All right, so as we said, big day for Samsung. Tell me about some of the bigger announcements, um, the more exciting things that have gone down here today. So we've got about a handful of announcements we're gonna be covering today that I'll talk about our theme today, which is around powering innovation. Okay. So we have a couple on the DRAM side of the fence, a couple on the NAND side of the fence, and a couple things around SSD as well. And it's all about what we can do to continue to allow our customers and the overall technology industry right. to continue to innovate. So all these tech gadgets that the rest of us all take for granted can continue to uh, evolve and, and improve. So it was a few years ago that people said four gigabytes and even six gigabytes were overkill for smartphones. And today we're seeing that handheld devices are more than capable of putting extra RAM to good use. Your Tech Day announcements are saying you can bring over 10 gigabytes of RAM to mobile devices. What are some practical use cases you foresee for adding all this power into a handheld device like a smartphone? Yeah, so actually we're announcing a 12 gigabyte UMCP device today that goes into a smartphone, for example, mm -hmm. and really think about, about it as a, an AI capable smartphone. Okay. So you're bringing lots and lots of compute right to the phone, and you're gonna be able to do a lot of things that we haven't even thought of yet. And that's where this is so interesting because we're creating this, this ecosystem where people can come along and develop the next killer app, the next software app, the next software program, or the next use case that's able to satiate all of that compute uh, power that's gonna reside in, in, in your phone of the future. Okay, so can you give me an example? So let's just say you have, you have a, a mobile device, 12 gigabytes in your hand. Mm -hmm. What are some, like you're not using that to, to send out your, your next tweet, right? You're not using that to send out an Instagram photo. What are some practical use cases of having all that power in your hand? So it could be having a lot of things going on at the same time. Maybe you're a mobile gamer. Maybe okay. you want to stream 4K a video on a new 5G network, or it's the confluence of all these things that you want to do at the same time. And you think about that compute power of what you're having on a phone used to be like what you had in a PC just right. a few years ago. So think about now how all the capabilities that your PC has being able to do that from your phone. So the move to 4G about eight years ago enabled a bunch of new things, things right. like Instagram, things like Uber, you know, things like Spotify, things that they're not just apps, they're not just services, they're things that actually change the culture here in America. What do you see 5G doing for us that we, that we can't even imagine today? That's a great question. I, I think, first of all, we, really, we don't know what we don't know right. because when, all, when 4G, uh, the advancement hit, it was, video streaming was in its infancy. Yes. And now Netflix is pretty much ubiquitous. Mm -hmm. So now as we go into more of a, a 5G with the additional bandwidth that that allows, I think that's gonna enable even 4K or even 8K video streams. But the beauty of this is as the hardware industry innovates and we innovate at the silicon level, and we have more bandwidth available, it's gonna be really interesting to see what all the new business models and the new use cases start to, to, to pop up because, again, I think that's what's so exciting to me about this industry is if we can fuel some of these technology advances, right. we can then create these sort of lifestyle changes for things that nobody even knew of 10 years ago, yeah. and now people just kind of take them for granted. Okay, do you have any guesses mm -hmm. as to what 
like something I'm, tr I'm trying to think like in the it's like you said it's hard to you don't yeah, know what you don't sure, know sure, sure. but i feel like you know more than i do okay. i think you have something in the labs or you know you guys you, you things, guys yeah. see some stuff that i don't see yet and i think you can share so from a from a mobile standpoint 5g is all going to be about uh high def video streaming but the other big thing that 5g unlocks is autonomous driving okay and so autonomous driving has to have that 5g capability for that speed that reliability mm -hmm. the, the bandwidth the latency and everything and then you get the vehicle to vehicle vehicle to infrastructure. So think about how like you can send an email across the country with a large email right. attachment to it, and yet this traffic light isn't talking to that traffic light, and one's red and one's green. Right. You bring 5G into the picture, and it creates that entire ecosystem we call V to X, so vehicle to everything. Mm -hmm. And the stoplights are talking to each other, the cars are talking to each other, and there's a sort of overall awareness of, of what's happening around you. I think that 5G will uh, unfold or enable in the next five or 10 years. Wow, it's gonna nice. be really remarkable. I also saw that Samsung announced the world's first 12 layer 3D TSV memory stacking process. How important is this for future applications such as AI and high performance computing? So we announced this new uh, 3D TSV 12 stack package, mm -hmm. which is basically for our HBM, we call that high bandwidth memory. Okay. And that is memory that is specifically made for AI and HPC, artificial intelligence, and then high performance computing applications. So think of this as going into, say, a, a media and entertainment vertical, mm -hmm. where something that used to take, you know, if you were rendering some special effects and you wanted to create a virtual environment that would take weeks or days, sure. now a lot of that can be done in real time with this kind of memory bandwidth that's available, and we put it very close to the CPU. So I think that is going to allow us to have much, much more capabilities, or the industry to have much more capabilities from both an AI and high performance uh, computing standpoint. Everyone talks about the amount of data that people consume from video streaming to social media content to even text messages and the pace of consumption is unstoppable. Could you break this down for me? What does one second of data look like today? And how is Samsung's technology playing in this unyielding data storm? Yeah, that's a really good question too. So if, if you look at uh, one second in 2019, it's over a thousand hours of Netflix being streamed. So think of the amount of the storage needs where that has to be stored on a server, right. the amount of bandwidth required to get that out to mm -hmm. a, an end device, be it a tablet or a phone or, 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 or a PC, and the amount of just capability that the industry yeah. has put in place to be able to, to enable that. And I think what's happening now is the explosion of data is now becoming so advanced. I mean, there's more than 20 billion connected devices that you've heard this new phenomenon called edge computing. Yes. So a lot of the, the uh, what's happening is that compute horsepower has to be brought closer to the data and we, that's what we call that edge computing. So now there's so much data being generated, it's actually too expensive to move it to a centralized cloud. And so we're gonna see a bigger build out at the, at the edge. And I think Samsung is gonna play at the forefront of the memory content, both mm -hmm. at the device level but then also in those edge computing devices that are allowing that, that data flow to go back and forth. With all the data that's generated, people uploading video, people downloading video, companies, but everything's on the cloud now. How do you keep up with the storage requirements? Like all this video that's being generated, all, always being uploaded. We have these data centers everywhere. Are they just constantly like, are people paid to just rush and just put hard drives in and just keep up with this? Or how, how does this work? I don't even know. I don't know, you tell me. So that's a great question. So again, in, in, in the data center uh, area, or just in storage in general, yeah. there's, there's a couple different areas. So there's what we call a hot data area. So this is like a, a brand new post from a famous person. Like okay. if, if Beyonce uploads a video, it's gonna get yep. lots and lots and lots of hits. That's gonna go into a solid state drive. Okay. So that's gonna be flash-based, memory-based storage, because it's gonna have lots and lots and lots of hits. Right. Me, on the other hand, with my you know, not so many Facebook followers. <laughs> if I post a picture on that very quickly, it'll go into what's called cold storage. So it's kind of being archived. Okay. So that's a different dynamic. And so what the storage um, industry has been very good at is sort of tiering the data set so that hot data and cold data can be sort of separated. The hot data can be monetized mm -hmm. because it's happening in real time right. and you can sort of tune products or advertisements based on people's location and what they're doing, right, yes. whereas cold data is more for archival purposes. But ultimately, everything that's in hot data today potentially can migrate to cold data in the future. Let's switch topics and talk about artificial intelligence. We've already seen tremendous applications for AI, even using it to help make better beer. What's Samsung doing to drive innovation and take AI to the next level? So a lot of the products we make are very central to, to AI because AI requires a lot of compute, a lot of horsepower there. 
And so I think some of the innovations that we're going to be talking about today on the DRM side in terms of more capacity, more bandwidth, some of the innovations we're going to be talking about on the HBM or high bandwidth memory side in terms of having um, greater stacks is going to enable even more uh, uses for AI in the future. Everything we're talking about today points to a more integrated future where devices are smarter, they can talk to each other, and even make decisions based on data. 5G, artificial intelligence, and smaller, more powerful chips all coming together, which is kind of the point That's of right, this event here, that. right? That's my wrap up. So give me, hold on, give me a glimpse into the future of everyday life for the average consumer once all of this matures in a few years. What, what does the day look like? I got you. You know, it's, it's really interesting. If you, if you think about where the, the, the intelligence of the devices that we all use and take for granted every day, mm -hmm. I think over time they're going to get better and better and better at predicting what you need. Okay and giving you those suggestions or ideas even before you know what you need. So for example, it's, it's the stoplight example, it's the when you yes. pull your car up into the driveway, the lights come on, you don't even have to think about that stuff. All your preferences are saved, everything is context-based. So the ads are gonna be relevant to you based on where you are, what your preferences are, what your personal history is. Mm -hmm. I think there's gonna be much more, I would say, customization down to the individual level. And you think about 5G, I mean, you're talking about location specific to within one meter. Wow. So everything's gonna know where everything else is, and I think everything is just gonna fit, and then hopefully much make our everyday lives much more uh, convenient and, uh, and smoother. Obviously, when it comes to a lot of what we've discussed today, lots of companies are looking to innovate in this space in their own way. A lot of them in different individual areas. Samsung is kind of innovating across the board, mm -hmm. right? How would you say Samsung is differentiating the market with its approach? Really, the, the fundamental area that, that, that Samsung has been able to, to differentiate ourselves within the semiconductor and especially in the memory space is, is number one is technology leadership. We're always the first to market with a new technology, be it the, the greatest capacity of, of a new SSD or solid state drive or the fastest DRAM or the, the most amount of stacks for, for HBM or high bandwidth memory. And the second one, second uh, front to that is the breadth of product. We really have an unparalleled breadth of product for every single vertical, every single application. We have a memory solution that is really custom tuned and custom designed for each of those. And that's really what allows us to, to, to power all this innovation. And, and that's why that's the theme of our, of our tech day today. Awesome, awesome. Well, Jim, thank you so much. Thank Taking you. Taking some time to talk to us about this, about these announcements. Very exciting. The future looks bright and amazing, especially for those of us who love tech. So thanks a lot. Hey, thank you so we much. We appreciate nice it. Absolutely. Any questions you have about anything we talked about today, please leave them down in the comments below. I'll meet you there for further discussion. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'm Andrew Edwards. I'll catch you in the next video.